Now let's add props to our component so that we can modify its content depending on the situation. Props allow your component to communicate with its context. With the values attached to props, you use them inside of your component to change the content, configure workflows, set variables, basically anything that can vary or anything that is contextual. So let's dive in. So on our button, we'll need a few things. We we'll want to be able to change the label. We we'll want to change the variance. So if it's a primary button or a secondary button, we we'll want to display an icon or not and obviously change the icon. So let's start with the label first. If we select the previous button that we selected. So that button is just a regular button. We haven't changed much from the default styling. So what we are going to do is we're going to go to the components tab at the top right corner. And inside of the properties sections, we're going to add a new one. Let's call that label. Each property can have a specific type. For our case, the label, it will be of type text. But if we look at everything that's available, we can see that we have a bunch of them, numbers, a boolean, select, icon and then a bunch more. We're going to use a few of them in that video, but you have all of these available. As a default value, we can input something like button. And on the advanced tab, you have a few settings that you can set. So the first one here is to change where that property is displayed. By default, it will be displayed in the style tab, but you can choose to set it on the settings have a few toggles next that allows you to set the behavior depending on the breakpoint, depending on the state and your classes. And you can also choose if that's a, a bindable uh, input or not. In our case, we just leave it at the default. The high property allows you to hide or show the property on the panel, but we'll show you just later how to use that. I'm going to hit create and now I have my label here. If I go out of the edit mode, inside of my instance. Now we can see that in the specific section of my component, we have the new property label. And I can change that to something like save. But with this property, we haven't bound it to anything inside of our component. So that's why nothing is happening. So we're going to go back inside of our component edit mode and on the text property, I'm going to bind this to the label property so that every time that we change the label on our instance, it will be bound to the label of our button. So that's how you set the label property. The next thing that we're going to set is the variant selector. So to do that, inside of the properties panel, we are going to create a new prop that will be the type. And the type of this prop will be a select. Inside of our select, we're going to add two options. The first one will be the primary button and the second one will be the secondary button. So the first one will be a value primary and the second one a value secondary. And the default value will be the primary. We're going to hit create and for the sake of the demonstration, I'm going to duplicate this button and the second one will have the secondary type. If I go back inside of my button, we are going to make some adjustment to the style. So we have this button on the left that we serve us as a model to our secondary variant. So what we want on that secondary button is to have the background white a border and the text in black. So to do that, let's start first with the background. On the background here, I'm going to hit the bind property to display the um, formula editor. And in that panel, we are going to use a formula, the switch formula. Basically this formula allows us to check the value of a variable and depending on the results, depending on what that value is, we will return a different value. So the first parameter that we want is the type, the property type. 
And what we want is that when the type is equal to primary, then we're going to display a, ba a black background. If the type is equal to secondary, so that's the case for our second button, then we want the background color to be white. So right now on the on the instance that I'm in, it's a black one. And if I go to the second one here, and if I go to the background property, we can see that it's displaying the white color. And we're going to do we're basically going to do the same thing for all of the other properties. So inside of our text color property, we're going we're going to add this switch, but the values will be um, the contrary. And we're going to do that also on the border property. So the border is behaving a, is a bit different. All right, so that's how to set up the variant. If I go back to my instance, if I switch between the primary and secondary values, then it will change some property inside of my button. So the benefit of having that select is that by constraining the possibilities in design of a component. So that's ideal for a button. The primary button will always have the same look. The secondary will always have the same look. The next thing that we want to do is to add this icon. So if we go inside of our button, inside of the settings panel, we can see that we have the left icon property. We're going to leave that on and we'll handle the conditional rendering of that icon a different way. So first, let me style this a bit. I'm going to add a bit of margin to the right side of the icon and I'm going to make it a bit bigger. We're going to add a new property that will be left icon. The type of this property will be a boolean and by default we can leave it to false. And inside of the conditional rendering of our of our icon, we can set the condition to this new boolean variable. So if we go to our instance, if we show or hide this icon, it will be displayed. So you'll notice that the icon is still black no matter the variant. So we can basically take the same property that we put inside of our text color and pass it inside of the color of the icon. So that way when it's on secondary, it will be black and on primary, it will be white. So we've successfully added a control to display or not the icon. Now we want to be able to choose the icon. So I'm going to go back to my properties. I'm going to add a new one that will be left icon. And I'm going to set that to the icon property. For some clarity, I'm going to rename the left icon to display left icon. If I select my icon, I can bind the icon property to this, to this new property. And if I go back to my instance, I can choose any icon from the library. Now, one thing that we can improve is that depending on if the display left icon is on or off, we, we want to display or not the left icon property. So that's a bit cleaner and that the component is a bit easier and more intuitive to use. To do that, we're going to go back inside of our component and inside of the left icon property, we're going to go to the height property toggle and then we're going to bind that to the display left icon. And we're taking the inverse of display left icon so that if the display left icon is off, then the left icon icon selector will be hidden and if it's on, it will be visible. And that's how you get this variation. So we've successfully added props to our component to make it very depending on the context. We've added different type of properties. 
There are so much possibilities with components, I can't wait to see what you create with them. In the next video, we are going to dive deeper into components with their variables.